TNTM The Show presents Talking Nerdy, June edition, with your hosts Pablo Gunner, Marvin Goof, The Ambassador, and we are here to talk nerdy to you about Acolyte. Let's get into the Acolyte. So, the Acolyte. It, this is going to be a deep dive. We're doing the deep dive Acolyte, okay? So, who wants to take the reins? Well, since I'm kind of the middleman here, <laughs> we're refereeing this whole thing. Let's just start with plot stuff. What you would either of you feel, plot-wise, this actually feels like if it's cohesive, if it's bad. What, what, what would you say the plot feels like? I feel it's just the bunch they just played darts one day just threw a whole bunch of ideas on the dartboard and whatever hit put it together in some shape or form without much effort pablo um i mean i it's it's hard because it's for the first two i mean to where we've gotten up to episode four i feel like it's pretty solid and i i feel like and i'm hoping it's only going to improve from here i hope from what we've seen will not be like Episode, the end of episode four was the climax, and then it's not going to get better than that. But I hope that's just the tip of the iceberg, hopefully, and it's just going to go up from there. So we'll see. But for me, I just feel like this, this was going to be hard from the get-go because of the fact that you have your old school fans, right? You have your, you have your OG fans, original trilogy. You have your Legends fans, which is not considered by canon from Disney. And guess what? It's not considered canon by Lucas either. He has said, the b books, all that extra stuff, it's not canon. He said, my movies are the only thing that's canon, which for him at the time was the OG, the prequels, and then I think some of Clone Wars, at least the, the Clone Wars movie, which I thought was horrible, but... And Clone Wars itself, like, first se season was was pretty weak, but then, you know, progressively got better. But the point is, that's how, so it's, and then even, like, KOTOR, right? Like, because that's the future, kind of, right? And then the past with KOTOR and all that stuff, it's not that old because it's High Republic era. So, and I, I have not read the High Republic books or comics, so I cannot speak to how good those are or bad they are. Um, I've, I've read other people's stuff, and they're like, yeah, it's not bad, it's good. So they know some of these characters, they have a good feel for them already. And so those people, I feel like they go, yeah, they got a good handle on these characters um, for the people that know the characters that are in there that are in the other High Republic stuff. But for me, I go, your fan base is, it's not really there. You kind of have to create it because you have old school fans and new school fans, and no one's really into this High Republic era. So you kind of have to somewhat start from the ground up, in a sense, even though it's Star Wars, right? So it's like, yeah, people are going to check it out because it's Star Wars. But there's also going to be that heat. This is awful! Somebody stop them! Do something! Good! Let the hate flow through you! You're not helping! Coming from it, right? You have old school, new school. So, that's the biggest struggle, and I think that's been the biggest struggle the whole time from the get-go, because it's like... I mean, even for me, I go like, I don't care about any of these people because I don't know any of them, and I don't know if they're in anything else, but that's part of your struggle in something new, is creating that care. Whereas, like, Ahsoka, I'm in because of Clone Wars and Rebels. Like, I'm already sold. And then with each episode, I was like, you're giving me everything I want. Like, this is just getting better, right? <laughs> so that already had me. Same thing with, like, Bad Batch, right? Like, that's just continuation of Clone Wars. And since I ended up loving Clone Wars, it's going to be a win for me, right? Like, it's going to be an easy thing for me. This is going to be an uphill struggle from the get-go, and it has been, obviously, to a crazy, insane degree, because people... Are people review-bombing it, or are they? is it legitimately bad? That is one of the things that is kind of a... I, feel like I would a say it's there. legitimately yeah. bad, because the, the problem with the case people are making with review-bombing is... Oh, they're new accounts, but look at everything else that's reviewed. A lot of times, people will go and make accounts. When they reviews. feel compelled. When they feel compelled, if it's really good or really bad. So to make that as your argument that it's being review-bombed is a little ridiculous. 
I mean, it's not ridiculous when it's proven because people are accidentally reviewing something else that's called Ac just Acolyte or Acolytes. They're review bombing those with reviews. And you can tell because the description is clearly them watching the Acolyte. And so I don't know if some of the people are even watching it if they're just trashing it because it's new stuff. Because we know people that, that trash it, that don't watch it, or they're just like, oh, because it's Disney Star Wars, it's garbage. And as far as I'm concerned, I think there's more better Disney Star Wars than there is old school Star Wars. Because, I mean... If you even look back to the to people go like oh plot holes like the it's not like the original is unfallible you know what I mean like it has its issues I mean think about it you have Luke who's crying over his master that he's known for a few hours maybe a, a few days at most I don't know the time frame specifically <laughs> but then she but then you have Princess Leia who pretty much saves the day almost right mm -hmm. to these two guys that are like we don't know what to do. Her planet was destroyed, and she's like, it's okay, Luke, it's okay. And it's like, really? You know, like, just like, I are mean, the met, whole... Are you talking about Obi-Wan or the whole Yoda? Thing. Obi-Wan, Obi-Wan. Well, Obi-Wan is someone he's known most of his life. It's just the old hermit that he likes and visits. Mm -hmm. It's not just, he didn't beat him for a few days. Was someone he knew. It's still hard to compare one person that's a hermit that you know to a whole planet of people and be well, like, which one's more sad? Right. <laughs> you know, like, like <laughs> who should we be crying for right now? Yeah, it's gonna, like, I mean, even with I, her, I get she's going to be mourning for the people she knows. Not, not the whole planet, because you're going to be sad about the whole planet, but you're going to be mourning, like, what's going to hurt is all the people you know. I'm just saying, like, family there's... Family and friends. The, the original doesn't go without its issues. It's not a perfect thing, so I don't know why people are acting like it's a perfect thing. It, it has goofy stuff, like, even the... I mean, you can, you can go to, like, oh, when he gets his arm cut off and there's blood, and you're like... <laughs> yeah, but we know that it's hot, and it doesn't create blood, like... But it's just, hey, that's that was the times. It was, yeah, there's camp. And I don't understand how we can't be like, can just move forward and be like, yeah, this can, and you can tell that this is different, right? Like, this is its own thing. It's obviously doing something different. And to me, the different is part of its weakness and strength at the same time because of the fact that you're going, okay, we're not even doing lightsaber fighting. That's what people want to see. Well, that's about to happen, it feels like. Yeah. So... <laughs> While we're while we're in the middle of this, speaking of different, let's talk about characters, mm -hmm. and in that case, how these characters are being treated. Like, how do you feel the Jedi are? Are they even worth talking about? Are they different, in your opinion? I mean, most of them are pretty bland and boring. Uh, the only, the only one that the ones that really the only one that really sticks out is Soul. Which is such a cop out of a name. It's like, hmm, we have a Korean guy. Hmm, what's the capital of South Korea? Seoul. There you go. That's his name, Seoul. I think that's really cool. I, I personally go like, that's really Are cool. You, really, five years ago, if they would have released something with a Chinese guy and called him Beijing, it would be universally panned and hated. Well, Pablo, what do you think? I mean, I agree with that last statement, yeah, but uh, but I still think it's cool. They spelled it different. <laughs> yeah, yeah, they, they, they stole Spanish and Portuguese word for the sun. Right, yeah. So, so for me, I feel like, okay, so Soul, I like him, yeah, he, he, the thing is, he's, he's taking a lot of notes from Qui-Gon, you, you see that, you sense it, and I like it, I, I, I like his vibe. There's that other character, uh, I forget her name, Vernestra, I think her name is, mm. and you can tell she's a very political Jedi, and I go, I don't like you, because you're so politically focused, and you care more about helping people, because it's like, you could have gotten to Kelnaka if you wouldn't have done this BS, and, and, and Soul's that dude to call it out, right? Like, he's like, hey, we can save him. If we get there on time, nope, this is going to waste time. And so I dislike her because it's like you're making her so politically focused. And I like that, right? Um, I also really like Yord because he does seem like 
the rookie cop, right? Like, the, you're showing these different Jedi, political, like, the sage, and then you have the rookie cop that's like, oh, I'm going to pull out my lightsaber soon, right away, because I'm a protector, and that's what I'm going to do. And I know it comes from a good place. I know, it, I know it doesn't come from a bad place, but it comes from... But the thing is, as a Jedi, you shouldn't be pulling out your saber, and that's something, a strength that I think they've also shown, which is... The, which the villain has used, villain so to speak, to their to their side, which is, oh, I thought you're not supposed to use your lightsaber unless you're going to kill somebody. Likewise, right? You shouldn't pull out your lightsaber unless there's a threat that you can't stop unless you have to use your lightsaber. I mean, it's the same thing with, with like police tactics. Like, you shouldn't have to pull out your gun unless you have to go to that level and stop. Like, they have to be at that same level. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And I love that they're showing that, and I and and it's so great to me. So I, I like Osha, like she's fine. I do also like um, uh, what's her name, Daphne Keen's character. Uh, she was X twenty three. I really like her character as well. Um, even like the new alien character that's the tra tracker. They didn't know like what kind of like Basil. Uh, yes, Basil. yeah, Basil. That looked kind of like a like an otter. Like I love that stuff because it's key, like to me. I go like. Yeah, it's fine to have, like, cute stuff in and, like, kind of campy, funny, you know, like, stuff in in Star Wars. Like, that's fine because what are all these things you have to go, like, what inspired George Lucas? Samurai stuff, Flash Gordon, Dune, obviously, you know, so are they Doctor doing... Doctor Who. Doctor Who. Are they doing Doctor justice Doctor, yeah. when in this stuff? Yeah, maybe not all in one episode, but as we've seen more and more, we're seeing more and more of that, right? Mm -hmm. And so that's really cool to me. Like, especially that they're doing, like, kung fu or whatever kind of martial arts instead of fighting. And I go, yes, because Jedi should not have to use their lightsaber unless they are going up against blaster fire or someone else with, you know, a lightsaber. Some kind of an upper right. threat. Right, exactly. So, ambassador, this is where I kind of want to put you in here. Um, they're bland. What would make them better? What would you want to see? I think it would be better to get more distinct uh, personalities that are more than two-dimensional. And then, like, the Vespa character is just, like, every time on scene, she just, like, kills the mo anything that's going on. Like, it's just not, not a very good actor, and it's pretty clear why she got the gig. Mm. Married to the director. Mm. Oh, okay. do it. Soul has some moments that are good, but I feel like they could have done a lot uh, better with him as well. And then I feel like just the big thing, the big thing missing from all of this is logic <laughs> okay. in general. Like, you're getting a fire extinguisher to put out a fire in space. <laughs> that, that is definitely something science -y that was a little interesting. The whole going after her, even though... You got ship logs that prove she never left the ship, and even if she did, to get to where she would need to commit this crime would take more, more, way more time than she has to even go there and come back. Mm. It's like, why were you? Why was she even considered guilty? Because uh, witnesses happen, but also in a lot of crimes, witnesses are something you want, but they're not. They're not something you can convict with easily. You need other evidence there as well because uh, when it comes to victims' testimonies, they keep changing, and so they're not as reliable when it comes mm -hmm. to eyewitnessing something because the viewpoint keeps changing more and more as time goes on. Okay. And, it, and the, inconsistencies just show up that's just what's been proven by witnesses in general right so what about stuff that is adding to the canon adding to the lore of star wars the mm -hmm. the weirdest one was having Moondi show up to call it legends where they got it from is even a bit of a stretch mm -hmm. because when the, you make movies you always have you always prepare a lot of good directors will prepare and writers will prepare like a little script little thing for them to kind of know their character uh, a good example of that is mad max uh, fury road when they did furiosa 
a lot of the stuff in the Furiosa movie, like the big points that happen, were already written down mm -hmm. when they made Mad Max Fury Road. And they kind of gave it as like a sum up of, this is who your character is, this is how they feel. And so, even in Star Wars, that was done. And a lot of that information, will, especially in the 90s and 2000s, would turn into movie guides. The information of where Mundi was age and everything was in the movie guide for Star Wars Episode One: The Phantom Menace. Mm. And that was what the actor was given go off of for information was things, was uh, how old he is and a little bit of a brief summary of just who he is as a person mm. to be able to play that role. So to kind of say that's legends is a bit of a is a bit of a stretch in itself. Well, then Pablo, what do you think about something that's been added that say it's good? I feel so. For one, I feel like you're being super nitpicky. Like th this is for it's sci it's not science fiction. It really isn't. It's science fantasy is what it is. It really is because it's not it's not it's not it's not science. It's I mean the science really could be thrown out. It's it's fiction fantasy more than anything else. I mean, it, it doesn't even take place in our own universe because we don't have any of this stuff. It's a made-up thing. And, and anyone new bring, that's coming in to create can make up stuff because, well, because they can. And just like that, you can go, okay, well, originally this is his age and that's how long they lived. Well, they changed it. I mean, they, Disney owns it now and they can change it. I, I know originally they wanted to use Yoda. And I think a lot of people have been asking for Yoda and have been wanting to see like a Yoda versus Yoda story, like a twin Yoda, mm -hmm. maybe kind of like this. And, and somewhat like you said, where they had a lot of ideas and then Disney was like, this is what you can use because they shot down being able to use Yoda. And so I think that's what they originally wanted is they, they wanted to go, let's do a Yoda story when it's Yoda and his twin and his twin's evil. And it was probably a lot similar to this story. But then they're like, you can't use Yoda. And they're like, all right, what about Kiati Mundi? You know, just to kind of somewhat tie it in. And then we're going to change his age. And it's like, yeah, they can do that. I think that's super neat picky. I think that's a dumb reason to hate this show. I also think it's really dumb to hate this show to be like, because this force coven of witches... created these twins it ruins anakin and it ruins all of star wars i'm like no it it i don't see how it does it's because it was different for one right like it's the difference between like they created it it just happened right like it just the force got it to happen to counteract what plagueis and uh the emperor do or rather the emperor because if you don't consider darth plagueis because it's not considered canon anymore which is fine whatever you don't it still exists. So you can or cannot choose to count that. Uh, I just feel like the story is so intriguing enough that it's kept me going, right? Like the mystery of like, well, what did the Jedi do? Like, were they more involved that they're showing? Like, even that flashback episode, that showed me war, because I just thought it was like a house fire. You know what I mean? Like, when they talked about it, and then I was like, oh, this was not a house fire. This was way worse. It was a stone fire. So, yeah. <laughs> but see, I don't know the properties of that stone. Is that stone in that on that planet flammable? I don't, and once again, we don't know the full mystery of, are the Jedi more involved than, than we think they are? Did they cause this? We don't know. That mystery of, why do they feel this guilt? Especially... Uh, what's it, Torben, like, or Tobin or whatever, like, why does he feel that guilt? Even Kalnaka, he... Forgive me. We thought we were doing the right thing. Has exiled himself, too, in a different way. Why? What is this guilt? I want to know what the, these Jedi did that make them feel so guilty, and also, why does Soul, why does he come to peace with it? And I also kind of feel like, 
probably everyone's going to have to die by the end of this, which is also going to connect the dots as to why they don't discover why or who the Sith are or were that they've come back and now they have the rule of two or whatever the, the, whatever it is. Like, they're just going to get enough. Because it was Bane that's the one that brought back the rule of two, and Bane has been made canon in Clone Wars. So, so that's, so that, this can all happen, especially if they just kill everybody off, you know, or at least those masters or whatever. I mean, it, it looks pretty fierce already, and I don't even think that's well, the master. if you kill off all those people, still a massive surge of people were killed, you're going to look into it. I mean, not if you don't have the people, you know what I mean? Like, well, so... if they have a council, a low-level council, and a high council... But once again, they've they used have... political reasons as the reason they're covering up so much, right? Like, they, if these people die and they get decimated by these, by this dark use, this dark force user, once again, the political Jedi doesn't want any of that to get out. A lot of the Jedi seem like, no, 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 we can't look bad, we can't look bad. So if all these people died, why wouldn't they just want to cover it up? Because they've been covering it up so far. We don't know yet. Once again, we're talking about something that hasn't even happened yet. So why are we complaining about something that we have that hasn't even happened yet, right? We're just, this is, it hasn't even happened yet. But as far as I'm concerned, like, to me, episode four is where it's at. Like, is the best it's been. All this stuff, like, the way that it's gone, it's been so intense. And then the way that the, the Sith showed up was, like, just so ominous and so epic. And I was like, oh my god. Once again, I don't think that's the Master. I think that's the Apprentice which makes it even scarier because Sith are super powerful and we should be seeing that level of super power and why it takes like a cabal of Jedi to defeat one Sith. So we're at a point I feel like where this is where we can start to start to make calls here. Ambassador, <laughs> what do you rate this? Well, I still some more character stuff, like especially in the fourth episode, may just like hell-bent on killing the Jedi's and just, nah, my sister's around, I'm not gonna do it. And then with Osha, just like when they get back from the mission after she tried to kill her sister, she's like, oh, let the Jedi handle this. It just doesn't make any sense and there's nothing usually in stories. Do you not know women? They are very indecisive. <laughs> they flip-flop left and right on the constant in one moment in their own heads. They're going through all these different scenarios, but... Usually there's some type of catalyst there or so. Well, there was events. catalyst for both of those. She, and Just that's the that thing. that one encounter, that's, that's a little ridiculous. The Sith use people. And that's why immediately I knew she is not the, she is not the apprentice. There's no way she's the apprentice. The Sith use people, right? They're users. And she was using this. And the Sith should have known once she finds out the truth, she's not going to want to follow through with this. But that's okay, because the Sith knows it's going to get them to where they want to be, or whoever this acolyte is. That's all they need. And yeah, Osha was like, she's conflicted too. Seeing someone that you think is dead, it's going to shake you to your core and make you rethinking back and forth. Like, should I be involved? Should I not be involved? Am I going to make it worse? Am I going to make it better? I don't know. So you're going to flip-flop like in that situation, right? Like... Especially you go like in police type work. Should I be involved? Am I going to make it worse? Am I going to make it better? The Jedi are using her. Like she was out and that was really the better thing to do. But they're like, can we use her? Like I said, they're not exactly good. And I will say that's the one thing I dislike about this series is I'm tired of seeing Jedi in a bad light. I'm ready to see them in a good light, which I did like that in Ahsoka where she was like, I'm chill, I'm cool. We're gonna, I'm going to forgive and we're going to move forward and I'm going to teach. You know, I like that. In this, you're showing more bad. It's a different, it's different, once again. I, I do like seeing the good more than the bad. And obviously, as the bad comes in, the Sith or, or the dark side users, I think, will see that. And I'm hoping we will. So, so do you feel like you have enough information to rate this? Or yeah. What would you rate it? Pass. So, uh, well, the ambassador is a hater. And I'm not going to say that it's an absolute, the thing is, is, it's good enough to keep me watching. You, I feel like you can't grade it until it's a hole, right? Because it could just crash and burn. There is a possibility that from going forward, it could just be horrible. But I will say, it, episode four, absolute must see. The uh, the first one, the first because it came as a control pair, the first two, I have to say it is too. And just because I say something is a must see, once again, it doesn't mean that I think it's perfect and it doesn't that it's flawless or anything like that. What I mean is that it's good, it's so good, you have to see it. 
And then, so, like, the third episode, I was like, yeah, it was fine. It wasn't, you know, like, I liked it. It was good. It wasn't the best. So I felt like, yeah, it's a must-see, like, in the overall arcing. But on its own, it's probably just going to be a check it out, right? Mm -hmm. But the fourth one, I'm like, the fourth one absolutely is a must-see. And that's why, like, collectively, when I go, like, okay, if you add up those scores, overall, it's a must-see for me. So I think it's the kind of fan that you are. Like, what are you clinging to? I'm the kind of fan that's like, you know what? I'm not here for a long time. I'm here for a good time. You know, I'm here to just enjoy. And like, I can watch, I can watch this with my kids. I can throw it on and have it on. The, like, the kids don't really pay attention to it much. They'll kind of pay attention. But I, at least I can watch it with them around. And because it's PG. And it's okay. Like, there's not, you know, it's there's nothing too horrible in there. It's, I don't see anything that's going to, like, scar them, you know? I mean, if anything, like, there might be some good stuff. And, and that's why, like, yeah, and, and once again, it's like, it's not necessarily for kids. I would say, like, mid-school and up, you know? Mm. It's worth checking out. Yeah, I, I just feel like people are just, they're just, be, they're being too hard. It is different. It is very different. It's meant to be different. Uh, I think people are just being neat, nitpicky with it, and... I, I, I really don't see how it's bad. I really don't. I don't. I really don't see how it's bad. I mean, just because, like, even when I look at The Last Jedi, it's not a bad movie. I, I feel like there's just bad parts, you know? Like, there's just parts that are, like, not good or, you know... You're like, okay, that was dumb. That was stupid. You know, like there's well, a, a bad there's movie way, all together. There's it's way all too many of those. premises on bad ideas. If it was, if, if it was all completely on its own... Once again, separate from Star Wars, you'd be like, this is a great movie. And that's why a lot of critics liked it, right? Because they go like, I don't care about the rest of Star Wars. I'm just here to grade this as its own thing. Mm. Uh, and that's why a lot of people don't like stuff that builds two things, too. Like, a lot of people didn't give good grades to, like, Endgame or Infinity War. Because they're like, well, I don't have to want to watch 20 different movies and shows. And it's like, yeah, but that's the magic. When you're there in the theater and they're like, Avengers Assemble, you lost it. When, when he got the hammer, you lost it. I and I think cried. this is a similar <laughs> thing where it's like, we're building up to the lightsaber battles, right? Like, it's not all going to be lightsaber battles. We're, you know, it's the ideas of like, hey, the Jedi are protectors and they shouldn't be using their lightsabers. And what we're going to see them use their lightsabers. We might see them get messed up. I don't know. So we'll we just have to see. We'll, we'll have see. to tell. We'll see. It's a lot of, it's, it's interesting. What about you? Oh, geez. Well, I'm just a middleman here. <laughs> I'm just, you know... But you've seen it, this. right? But yeah, absolutely. Okay. I've watched it, and, you know, it, I'm I'm the, also the kind, you know, I will be open to say I'm the kind of person that's like, Pablo, watch the entire thing, take it as a whole experience, and then give some sort of rating. I'm still watching it. You all, you've heard our opinions here. Okay. Just, we'll leave it up to you whether you want to invest into this. So we'll see how it goes. Yes. <laughs> cool. All right. Let's talk about our merch. Let's talk about our merch. I'm sporting uh, our Star Wars stuff, the Star Wars Talk Nerdy to Me, just plain. And then I got the shorts, Talk Nerdy to Me. You can get that on our website. It's on sale with free shipping. Probably going to continue to be because of the fact that Acolyte is continuing into the next month. A lot of this stuff is like prototype stuff. So it's upgraded. There's better versions on our actual website. And hey, if there's anything that you want customized to you or you there anything you have any idea, just send it to us and we'll do our best to do that and see what we can get away with. Because there's some stuff we can, some stuff we can't. <laughs> you know, we yeah, push the yeah. boundaries as much as we can. Yeah, <laughs> yeah I got my uh, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles Talk Nerdy to Me shirt. shirt. Pretty awesome. I got the Halo one. The good Halo. Ooh, yeah. Yes. I like it. So, yeah. Uh, and if you want any of this stuff, just... Request it. If it's not on the website, just hit us up and, and we'll make it available to you and, and hook you up. Cool? So for shoutouts, we really don't have much uh, it's because, um, well, I mean, all, MK Jekyll and Hyde is now at the top of that list because they're phenomenal. They reached 250 subs on their for their comics, for their online comics, and, and they're really cool and really awesome, and they do great stuff. I know they're a, a parent as well. And so it's, it's great conversing with them and just all their posts are great. The Pesky Gremlins, they have a new website and they have like new comics, web comics out too that look fun and enjoyable. And, and they always help out with their stuff. Eric Lopez, that guy's always a G, like he's the best on, on Twitter mm -hmm. and retweeting our stuff as well as the podcast that never dies or what, what is it? The podcast that wouldn't die? The podcast that wouldn't yeah, die. Yeah, the podcast yes. that wouldn't die. They're always awesome too. Check them all out.
I believe that's it for us, right? Yeah, just make sure to like and subscribe. Talk nerdy to me. Stay nerdy, planet Earth. Keep it nerdy, y'all.